Nothing to do with the bloody occasion. Let's get down to business. Tommy Rooney, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Chair. Hi, Shane. Morning, Tommy. And how are the butterflies? All good. Oh yeah. Good, sure. Okay. All right. Let's see. We're, you know, we're we're in a we're in a good place, aren't we? Are we? Horse into it there, horse. Right. No changes to slide four, but there's a lot of changes after that. Let's let's get to slide three. From Mana have slipped back to twenty fourth place despite promotion to division two. Limerick are in twenty third. Leash have moved up two to twenty two. Fair play to them. A great win last week. Offaly have moved down to twenty first. Sligo have moved back 1 to 20th. Uh, they're the lowest team in the All Ireland series. Antrim have moved up 2 to 19. Cavan, there's been an awful lot of complaints from Cavan people all year long. They've slipped back to 18th. Possibly where they deserve to be after the year that they've had. Mead are in 17th, they're up 1. And down, my Dalton Cup favourites are in 16th on slide 2. So if you want to move on to slide 2 now, there's a bit of controversy here. Shane. I didn't know you were going to be on. The power rankings were supposed to be on Tuesday. Well, I'm on. Keep talking. On, on to slide two. Clare are in the lowest spot they've been all year. They're down to 15th place. And they've gone back three. A double whammy losing Colin Collins this week. They've also been in the division. Oh. I, I do think that they're probably a better team than Loud, but Loud have had a better year this year. Loud were in the 14th place. Westmead have moved up to 13th. Now, there could be complaints over this, given that Loud came back in the Leinster Championship. But I think Westmead showed in the All-Ireland Series that they are the poster boys of the of the, the new format, winning the Tatchen Cup last year, being competitive this year. There was a great stat there. While they had 15 men on the pitch during the All-Ireland Round Robin Series, their score difference was minus one against Armagh, Galway and Tyrone. So that just shows you... To go, I always obviously blew them away by seven points in the in the last fifteen minutes. But Westmead were so close to just proving the benefit of this entire system. Yeah, at the weekend. And if they'd knocked Tyrone out, it would have been one of the all time great shocks of the weekend. And yet, it wouldn't have been a shock at all in in the manner of which their performances. And I, I think they deserve massive credits for what they've done. I think that Lau they're lucky to be fourteenth, given that they actually had the opposite experience really in this portion of the competition they didn't seem to get to grips with it at all yeah I mean that's fair Ger. absolutely I think but look at it I think uh, yeah, I suppose you've got to look at the development of different teams like Loud have kind of come from for me Loud's development has been like so fast Westmead have had Westmead have kind of had this coming for a while I think they've they kind of had some big results over the last couple of years Loud were essentially nowhere until Hart and Devlin got the grips of them um, and their progress has been ex- exceptional they had an absolutely unbelievable league and they, they're probably they're probably lucky in Leinster to, to beat both Westmead and Offaly um, and get to that Leinster final where they suffered a tank into Dublin which can happen to the best of teams and they suffered a tank into Kerry which can happen to plenty of teams in this tier as well so um yeah, Loud will be disappointed, but like they obviously came very close to getting a result against Mayo. They were two points off Cork. It wasn't a it wasn't a disaster. Okay, like that that, that those tankings can happen to a carrier to Dublin, but I I would classify them in a similar enough area to Westmead. Twelfth position, Kildare. What a win at the weekend! Like what a performance. Uh, even listening to Ben McCormick and Kevin Feely after the game, the way they spoke about it, how they wanted to prove that they were good enough to play for that jersey, they wanted to prove to the outside noise that this team had something and we've said it like it's on paper Kildare have had this that we've expected it they just haven't shown it and like I felt like Enda Smith's point at the end to level it Enda like, Smith that was, that was one of the all time great scores that you're ever yeah. going to see it was incredible what? how did he even do it, was, it from there or even think to do it, was, it from there it was class it was like the ultimate the ultimate clutch score it was like a Conor McManus moment and next thing Daniel Flynn and Kevin Feely lock eyes and they score what the mark should be. A set-piece move, like something out of Belichick's playbook. 45 to the 20. Feely grabs it on his bloody weaker side and he puts that over the bar. I thought it was a remarkable thing at the weekend, lads, that in this new format, we had four players in the final play of the game who had their county's fate in their hands. They had Aidan O'Shea, Shane Walsh, John Heston and Kevin Feely. 
Yeah, and the bone and, that I picked with, with your colleagues on the football pod, I hate to say, I told you so, I could hear them slowly reversing. Paddy's still yeah. not accepting that. Ah, look, just because we've had one good, amazing, we've had like the literally the greatest day of Gaelic football that there's ever been in championship. It was the greatest day of Gaelic football in championship history. There's never been as much on the line. There's never been as many games on all around the country. There's never been as many people invested in the outcomes of them. And it's like, it's not by accident. It's not by accident. You have, that's, why, that's why the system is the way it is. It's like, oh, too many games. The, the, there haven't been too many games. There's only been three games. All the crap that happened beforehand, all those provincial games. Okay, Shane, yeah, I understand. Uh, a little, little local fair in Ulster that they write poetry about and sing songs about. Fair enough, yeah. Paddy Cavanagh, good man. But actually, the, the, it has been a brilliant, brilliant championship. It was all, all the shadow boxing wasn't shadow boxing. It was teams trying to find out whether or not they were good enough to continue. And it turns out Mayo weren't shadow boxing. They just weren't very good so far. I don't know. I think amazing. Literally the best day of Gaelic football that we've ever had. We're in the same boat, Jer, 100%. And um, look at Paddy and James are obviously from uh, a pair of counties that have shared nearly 80 odd Ireland's between them, you know. Exactly. They may take a little bit longer to convince than the others. We get there. And who, who ended up being like, like, oh my God, go away, Mayo, have literally just messed this entire thing up. They were in pole position. Even Roscommon were in first place. The three Connick teams were in first place in the groups. And now, look at what they've got ahead of them this week. So, um, yeah, so let, let's just keep going here. I'm just going to say, you're, you're saying Kildare yeah. are the worst team left in the championship. I'm just not sure I fully agree with that. But, uh, you know, we, we like to be uh, written what off. What has what proved the Tommy wrong in previous games, apart from the weekend game? Well, when it, when it really mattered, they dug it out against a team who were massively ahead of them in the power rankings. Sure, look, I think I was delighted for them. We'll see. We'll see how we get on against Monaghan at the weekend. Shane is is making it sound like we'll barely keep the ball kicked out to them. Yeah, well, uh, Kildare obviously at home in uh, Tullamore, so uh, Monaghan are possibly lucky that it's not in Newbridge. Mm. Um, look at Monaghan; are the type of team that like they're in eleven place, Shane. I know you're not going to be overly happy with that but they drove with Derry they were, that was huge yes. right? they learned from their mistakes they, they stayed up in the league 100% that was great Finney Corey has had a really really good year I do think they're limited though in what sense I think they're limited Shane. like I think we're seeing now like Conor McManus' powers are waning um, I hope he comes on at the weekend and kicks the winner no you don't like that'd be great that'd no. be class no 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 but it would like you know? for him yeah like, it'd be great, we, get another, no. we get another clutch moment once more next weekend where I, I hope Kevin Feely blocks him down as he's man. trying to kick the winner that's what I hope <laughs> well, that, that's totally fair uh, like uh, Monaghan I think they, we've seen that there's a new there's younger players coming through there's a new generation I do think that's where they're at Shane if you can convince me otherwise good luck to you the, well, people said that, that Monaghan were limited in, in the sense that Conor McManus once he retired they had no they had no players coming through they had no shooters and they've proved who's replacing Manzi well, like, who's replacing Manzi look, look at the spread of Monaghan scores in games they've had like, they put up 123 against Clare Conor McManus only came off the bench very late on Drew with mm. Derry up in Derry McManus came on for the last maybe 90 seconds um, they're kicking scores from everywhere McCarran's kicking his 9 points McCarthy's kicking you know, one two against Clare from wing back. Uh, Michal Bannigan's popping over scores this year. Stevie O'Hanlon, Gary Mohan, a couple of lovely scores, albeit in defeat at the weekend against Donegal. Like they have young players. And by the way, the Monaghan crowd are going to travel as they usually do in numbers to to Tullamore. They've got a minor game in an All Ireland semi final as part of the double header at uh, the weekend yeah. against very Kerry, <laughs> which they knocked them out. But anyway, yeah. let's let's move on. So Cork are tenth, Donegal are ninth. Yeah, look, it's it's harsh, Shane, but I just felt with the seismic results of the weekend, been a ninth, there needed sorry, to be a bit of movement. Had, they've had great results over the last year or two, and they've been a ninth. I feel like it, I was doing the leave insert, and Monon were still in, in ninth, Tommy, in these power. Yeah, but, it, but who, and who, who all of a sudden they lose one game and they they drop down two places. But, well, but who was ahead of them, Shane? Who was ahead of them? You had Tyrone ahead of them, who won an All Ireland less than twenty four months ago. You had Armagh ahead of them, who got to an All Ireland quarter final last year. Tyrone team they beat this year, but the team they beat this year, by the way, in Ulster. Yeah, but Tyrone have a higher ceiling, Shane. They have a higher ceiling. Let's get on to the first page. Come on. It's the ceiling. Okay, can, we just, can we just mention Corker and Tent, like? Yeah. That's, that's a big deal for a county the size of Cork to finally be in the top 10. I don't know if Owen Sheehan ever had them in the top 10 after all the, the Kerry Yaron about Cork over the last couple of years. So I just think this is a monumental moment in the history of the power rankings, the official Gaelic football power rankings on OTBAM. Donegal are in ninth place. 
credit has to go to Aiden O'Rourke. Um, he's really steadied the ship there, I and think, those players turned it around. I think Aiden O'Rourke is in the shout for manager of the year at the moment. <laughs> for, for, what he's, for what he's done to get them to, yeah. f- to finish where they finished mm. is is absolutely truly remarkable. Yeah. And I think there's a sting in the tail for Donegal just yet, but let's keep going. Yeah, Donegal are playing uh, eighth place, so ninth against eighth, it's twelfth against eleventh, ninth against eighth in the, the preliminary quarterfinals they're going to be absolutely box office Bally Buffet Donegal Tyrone McBrearty is on his way back Gallon is in great form um, like Donegal are doing is like after losing Murphy McHugh Langan's out they're missing so many players Brendan McCall had an exception game at the weekend shut down McCarron Thompson's we saw Dara Canavan's Thompson's left with Dara Canavan's performance at the weekend lads like oh my god left foot right foot this guy Oh, he's, he's going to be so good and we're starting to see it um, and it was interesting at the weekend I felt like managers took a chance I don't think they realised just how dangerous losing could be you know Enda Smith said afterwards look we're still true but like if Roscommon are in the hide if Monaghan were in Clonus you'd feel a lot better about them going into the weekend there's such fine margins in these games Tyrone obviously took the decision that well they must have I'm, I'm kind of going out on a limb here Darren McCurry needed to be protected there must be a little niggle or a nick. Um, Damien Comer and Dylan McHugh, that was a late call by Galway to let to essentially protect them. And now their entire team is going into week on week, whereas the quarter finalists have a two week break. If they win that game, they have a two week break. And if they win that game, they have a two week break to the final. Paddy Andrews said they have their rhythm over the next couple of weeks. So it's very, very difficult. It's going to be so difficult for a preliminary round team to get there and go all the way. Toronto are in eighth place. They've slipped back. They're absolutely blessed. If you go back anyone at the end with that clutch free, John Heslin, even no matter how tough it was, you back Heslin, a fellow who's done it all, all the time for St. Lomans and West Mead and was so close to knocking Toronto out. That would have been just such drama. Roscommon has slipped back to seven. I hope we're not seeing the old failings that we've seen in Roscommon over the last couple of years where they give us a monumental performance in Connacht and they go out with a limp in the All-Ireland series I don't think I don't think it will be I think that they're going to put in a performance against Cork but that is a dangerous game 7th against 10th um, that is a dangerous game for Roscommon and Porky Cueve Armagh moves up to 6th place I've got a lot of grief for apparently having an Armagh bias over the last couple of years Anti-Armagh or pro-Armagh <laughs> Pro Arma. Now, did they not? Um, I I must have missed a bit where. So at the weekend they won without Rian O'Neill, right? Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, they appealed the suspension. It got uh, turned down, and I think they didn't decide to proceed to the DRA. Right. Um, because I, I possibly the, the suspension could have been extended or something. You could double it if you lose that. So okay, maybe I'm wrong with that. But they didn't bother. They just said, "Look, we'll we'll take our medicine and we'll go on," which is probably fair because. You know, I'm I'm kind of sick of teams, you know, getting deserved red cards and getting away with it after it. Like so, can I know, can I just make a gonna, point? If you're going to take it, take your medicine. McGinney McGinney afterwards, when he was talking about uh, turning off the telly because it's nothing but whining and moaning, and I actually feel like people haven't said that last weekend was the greatest Gaelic football weekend in history because they're so wedded to the position that the game has gone shit the the system is is too bloated and boring that they couldn't actually bring themselves to enjoy what they were seeing because it would have made them look a little bit foolish for the early decisions that they made am I wrong about it being literally the greatest weekend of Gaelic football that we've ever had it's up there Jerry. Uh, I don't think I think you're right that we haven't appreciated it yet and I think there there is something in that that you're saying people possibly didn't want to I couldn't help it like I, I I'm sorry I can't enjoy this because I told everybody this was terrible and now I'm really enjoying yeah. it but I can't say it because I look stupid but look at it it doesn't get away from the fact that the, there is issues in the game and there are huge frustrating anomalies in the bloody rule book you saw it with David Goff and Sean on the Sean Powder call he got that right and next thing Noel Mooney gives Kevin Maguire a yellow card for stone cold bloody Steve Austin move on on, on Con Patrick taking him out with a clothesline across the neck yeah. and like I couldn't get my head around it that still I don't know the bloody rules. I, like, I'm I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect. But even that. even the hurling folk appreciate that. Like the, <laughs> the 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 ball gets thrown around a lot. There's diving and hurling. There's yeah. loads of issues. But if if imagine what the hurling folk would have been saying after last weekend, if that had been a hurling weekend where the the big four games where there oh. was stuff up had, had come down to the last play, with, it'd with, be a national holiday. With, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but the football folk they hate the game so much. 
and they just want to be right more than anybody else, they're like, oh, I really enjoy this, but I can't. I'm stuck. I can't say it. Oh. Well, I think it's possibly because the, there's a lot more general football fans. Do you know what I mean? It's like the Irish soccer team. There's so many fans that it's easy to just hear all the noise whereas the hurling people they're so they're such a protected species that you know they can appreciate it a bit more their, their adoration for the game shines through a bit more than maybe the general football people and look at it it's, it's totally fair to actually be frustrated with the game because yeah. there are issues I'm not saying there, there are no issues but like at the same time when the good stuff happens you have to enjoy it because otherwise there's no point yeah. <laughs> well there's a couple of good pieces written at the weekend that we shouldn't rush to, to it's too late rush to shut down this championship before it happens I think it's going to be the full three years I think you were you were making that point that um, they're not yeah. going to they're, like why would you change it now let's just have the three Absolutely. years of evidence it's also There's the amount of games as well like seeing the provincial grounds you know when you look at the highlights of the weekend and you're seeing matches in Carrick and Shannon and in Breffney Park and in Tullamore the whole country it's got its fill at the weekend like yeah, and sorry, the, yeah. the one thing about our man Galway they were complaining about the game being in Carrick and Shannon like in fairness it wasn't full do you know no so no, no, it wasn't full. And like I'd say at the weekend, we mentioned Clonus for Monaghan and the Hyde First Common. I'd say the shop owners and the publicans of Killarney were absolutely sickened that Cork pulled off that result. Jack O'Connor and the players will be delighted they're straight through the quarter final, but they'd have loved to have another game in Killarney at the weekend. So, okay, let's keep going because uh, Derry are the only team in the first three slides that haven't moved. They're in fifth. Some people might say that's harsh. Probably is harsh looking at how Mayo, Mayo played at the weekend. I feel like Mayo possibly thought we'll get we'll just get through it we'll just we'll get there and we'll be in we'll be in such an amazing incredible position I'm not saying they underestimated Cork but I just think they expected to get through that game and it would have been fair enough given how they absolutely rattled the entire All-Ireland series with that defeat of Kerry I made the point last week that if they'd beaten Loud 14-9 we wouldn't really be worried about them but and we wouldn't <clears throat> we wouldn't and the scoring difference wouldn't have been fine just the game management was just ah oh, it was a killer right and it's a young enough Mayo team right it, there is a sprinkling of youth throughout the team but there was just a couple of decisions made like Stephen Cohen going off I think was was a, was a bit of an issue like the, Kenny and O'Connor they're, they're, we, we mentioned the Curry call the, the Comer and McHugh calls and some of these possibly can't be you know um, can't be helped but like would you have rather had Killian O'Connor on the pitch for five minutes at the end of that game than giving him 60 minutes in a club game the night beforehand? Maybe that's going to come back and it's going to do Mayo the world good and Killian O'Connor is going to be flying and he's going to come on at the weekend and kick the winner in Salt Hill against Galway. Mayo's record in Salt Hill is really good. Right. I think Galway would have preferred to have this game in McHale Park. Mayo's record in Salt Hill is really good. Um, and yeah, like just it's just mind-boggling how the number one team in the power rankings, Galway, let that one slide at the weekend too their game management laid on they're going to be kicking themselves now part of me just feels that Goy have shown us enough evidence each year that they're good enough to still win in Ireland from where they're at well we shall see um, I think uh, just to go back to Kieran McGinney I think he was talking about you Tommy I think he was talking about you oh yeah I think he was talking about the power rankings when he was but saying me I've never been more than complimentary about Armagh all year long I don't think Geezer was going for me Jer. well you had Galway first and, and uh, Armagh eighth last week I'm fairly sure right for, but sure I made the point that uh, with all the sliding doors moments that have happened uh, let me, where let, would Armagh uh, be well I, um, his point was oh, there was a world of difference between us and that we we uh, beat them in the league and they beat us after uh, on penalties and there was nothing between us and there was an ocean between us I'd say it was you and that was it maybe maybe Spillane well, I don't know well possibly no 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 do you know what you could be onto something there we know who they are he said we do know Tommy Rooney yeah it could be but if I call there it were, geezer the, and Tommy there were grumblings coming out of the county pretty quickly about the power rankings and you know when I was down in Porky Cueve a member of the the Cork backroom team gave me a bit of grief for the power rankings people in Galway and the Mayo backroom teams have heard of that grounds this year you could be onto something Jer. They are watching. Are, it ins- is important. Inspired Armagh to beat Galway at the weekend. So Galway are third, Dublin are second, and Kerry are first. So it's Kerry one, Dublin two, Galway three, Mayo four, Derry five, Armagh six, Roscommon seven, down one, and Tyrone uh, down one as well. Galway, the biggest losers this week, down two from first. Kerry up to one, and Dublin are second. You're not making any change. You're accepting that the flat track bullies of Kerry are still ahead of Dublin, even though Dublin now have managed to get all of their players back fully fit in a way that they didn't have last year. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kerry, Kerry have 
David Clifford in absolutely imperious form um, and they flat track bullied loud more than Dublin flat track bullied Sligo marginally so look if the Dubs just haven't shown me enough to, to go into first they'll be happy with that Dublin 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 are in a perfect position Kerry are in such a good position it's nearly depressing that they're in the quarterfinals I just thought they were going to get a bit of interest yeah, uh, yeah. Well, an interesting kind of like you know something if this is again as we said last week like 2010 where we could possibly get an All-Ireland winner from anywhere and Dublin and Kerry go on and win it it's going to be for me a little bit frustrating because there is an opportunity here for anyone in that top eight I would say to win the All-Ireland I'm ruling out the other four All right. that are left Pin it to the dressing room wall, Glenn Ryan. No chance, says Mead slash uh, Monaghan slash Claire's Tommy Rudy on the <laughs> official power rankings. Tommy, See you good, lads. good stuff. Thanks, fellas. Bye-bye. Tommy knows his football, obviously. Listening to football about the odd time. And I was looking at the power rankings and I thought,